Because Ben Mason became such a popular person yesterday, we didn't even talk about what was going on with the good news. And that good news was that we got a lot of good information yesterday, a lot of good returns to the practice field yesterday. Uh, Sammy Watkins, he is back. And we know he's been missing action. And we've been wondering, like, we a little bit scared about his uh, the injury going into week one. It was, like, undisclosed and they weren't saying nothing about it. But he's back. Hollywood, who we have been anticipating coming back for a long time, he's back too. Marlon Humphrey, who had that scare a couple of weeks ago, he was back as well. Nick Boyle. Now, they said he was off just running and whatnot, but Jeff Zrebik said he looked really good running. He was off to the side, though, doing his thing. So he didn't fully practice, but he returned to practice. So that was a really, really good thing. And that's a really, really good sign. Will he be ready for week one? Who knows? We'll see. Probably not. Because, again, Harbaugh said no for week one. So I wouldn't anticipate him being ready for week one. But... Harbaugh also likes to play games with his words, so we'll see. But anyway, that was nice. And Justice Hill. Justice Hill also returned. So you know what? I'm starting to think that is that all these guys, they just didn't want to practice. Straight up. They, they just didn't want to practice. Uh, and they were like, you know what? Um, they probably talked to the coaches. Obviously, with Humphrey and Watkins and Boyle, they were all locks to make the roster but with justice hill he probably had a conversation with the coach was like look um am i good are y'all gonna keep me around because if so i don't feel like doing this i ain't practicing uh and then they were like yeah yeah you're good you'll be here okay well i'll see y'all before week one and he's back now so with, with that being said it, it, it is a beautiful thing that um guys are getting healthy uh and guys are getting healthy at the right time because now ain't no more preseason now everything counts. We are officially in the season. It, it's, it's time to prepare for week one. Uh, Raiders roster is set. Ravens roster is set. And of course, again, no, no roster is final because there are always going to be changes throughout the entire season. But the main guys are there. Well, at least most of them. Pernell McPhee still ain't back yet as of this video. But anyway, um, another move that the uh, Ravens made was bringing on Eric Tomlinson. And again, y'all know, we said it, that this was something that we expected them to do. We expected them to release him. They released him. We expected them to bring him back uh, after the final 53-man roster was set. They brought him back. So now he is back with the team. But addition by subtraction, because you can't just bring on people without opening up roster spots. Somebody's got to go. Uh, and in this case, not that they had to go, but they just had to go on IR, injury reserve, and short-term injury reserve. And one of those people who went on there, which was expected, was Ravens rookie receiver, uh, first-round draft pick, Rashad Bateman. Uh, so with Rashad Bateman, um, he will miss the first, at least the first three games. After they miss the first three games, then they can come back whenever after that. Sometimes people go on injury reserve and they'll miss five games. Sometimes they'll miss six. Um, but he has to miss at least the first three games, and hopefully that's all he misses because we, we want this team full go as full go as they possibly can be. Somebody else who they also put on injury reserve short-term IR is Boyk Boyk, Miles Boykin. Um, and there was a lot of questions from a lot of Ravens fans, especially myself, because I, I thought Miles Boykin was going to be done for the year. I thought that he was going to be IR stashed. I, I did not see him making the roster at all, especially since he hadn't played in the preseason, uh, especially since he had been injured. I was just like, no, nah, they're they not going to keep Boykin. I just don't see it happening. But they kept him. They kept him. And I'm not mad at it. Uh, and I guess that, that, that blocking ability goes a long way. And maybe the, this, these Ravens really want to see what Miles Boykin can be with these new wide receiver coaches because that has been just a big factor in so much and and somebody pointed it out I forgot who it was but they pointed out the fact that even a lot of the backup wide receivers the guys who aren't starters they had even been looking good throughout the preseason so shout out to the coaches man because coaches they make a really big difference I remember Going into this uh, offseason, 
Uh, I was saying it. Uh, for those of you that were around back then, um, y'all heard it plenty of times. I was saying what, what these Ravens need to do. They need to hire some young coaches, some young coaches who do not have uh, NFL experience, who do not have film on them in the NFL, but just some young, innovative guys that they can bring on the staff to really just help this offense. That's what they need to do. What did the Ravens turn around and do? They brought on T. Williams and Keith Martin. Now, they have worked with NFL wide receivers because they obviously got the relationship with Sammy Watkins, with Tyreek Hill, with Devontae Adams, with Juju Smith-Schuster, and there's more on the list as well. But even just those four names alone, it's like, oh, okay, yo, okay, y'all, y'all, y'all know some stuff. But they, they brought those two on, and I was just like, yes, yes. This is something that I really felt like they could have used. And because it can make all the difference in the world. Because Ravens' track record is obviously just is terrible when it comes to the drafting and development of wide receivers. Now, you, 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 have, you have some hits with the Torrey Smith. It obviously worked out with him. Uh, with Hollywood, it's been working out so far, too. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. And you also got a lot of misses. But one of the biggest things uh, is coaching because you can have the best this and the best player at that, the fastest this, the tallest that, the guy with the best hand. You can have all of that stuff. But if you don't know how to bring out the best of them with your coaching staff, then it's, it's going to be pointless. It's not, it's not going to work. So this is a uh, when they brought on Keith Williams and, 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 and T. Martin, I was all for it. So shout out to them. Now, uh, somebody who has been in question like, man, what's going on? Because a lot of people see that we brought like literally everybody back. They brought everybody back uh, on the practice. But guys like Levine, who a lot of people were like, oh, man, why'd they cut Cole Cap? They, they brought him back on the practice squad and, and just and with that, too. That's very interesting. Um, and we'll see how this thing plays itself out because Levine was cut from the active roster, but he was added to the practice squad. Now, with the practice squad, you can elevate two players uh, every game day. Now, um, it, the way that that works is once you elevate a player twice, if you want to bring them on a third time, you either you have two options. You have to either uh, activate them and put them on the active roster or you have to release them from the practice squad. And then they have to clear waivers so nobody puts in a claim for them. So 31 other teams have to be like, mm, no, nah, we don't want that guy. So they have to pass through waivers, and then you can bring them back on the practice squad. Those are the only two options you have. So you either keep them or you run the risk of releasing him. So with Anthony Levine, it's very interesting that the Ravens decided to bring him back, not to the active roster right now, but to the practice squad. So that really, in, in my opinion, that lets us know that the Ravens, they really love these young safeties because they were more willing to put Anthony Levine in a spot where there's that risk. Because if you're on a practice squad, yeah, that's cool, but teams could sign you off of another team's practice squad to their active roster. So that, that lets me know that the Ravens, that right now, they value the young safeties more than Anthony Levine. And we know Anthony Levine, he's a Swiss Army Knife. He's been with the team for the longest. He's been rocking with them for a minute. He is a Super Bowl champion with them. He's, he's been around the Ravens for a long time. Um, but that, that move, it says a lot. Um, but anyway, with Pernell McPhee, we still waiting like <laughs> any day now, man. Any day. It's right now I'm recording this at 10.03 a.m. It's Thursday morning. And Pernell McPhee has not signed back with the Ravens yet. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's expected that he's going to be back. It's expected, but you can expect, you, you, they expected Ben Mason to be back. <laughs> and look what happened. <laughs> and look what happened with him, man. So nothing's official until it's official. You could have a handshake agreement. You could have a wink, wink agreement. You could have all that stuff. But it's not official until they actually sign those papers so with Pernell McPhee it's just it's, it's a waiting game right now man it's a waiting game and um 
<laughs> we gonna see, man. But uh, back to Eric Tomlinson real quick. I, I do like that move. Uh, whether Nick Boyle plays or not. Again, not expected to play, but whether he plays or not, I like that move because uh, it gives you insurance. Because you got Mark Andrews, you got Josh Oliver. Those two, they're going to play. Um, but with Nick Boyle, um, you, you're iffy about him for week one. So worst case scenario, if he's not ready for week one, okay, you got your blocking tight end in Eric Tomlinson. So this is another example of the Ravens staying ready. So you ain't got to get ready. So anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. One last thing. I do not believe they put Jimmy Smith on the short term IR. So uh, with that, that lets us know, too, unless I missed it. Let me know if I did. But they didn't put him on short term IR. So that could be a sign that maybe they feel like he'll be ready over the next two weeks. Not the Raiders game. Probably not. But. Maybe for the Chiefs game, maybe he'll be ready by then. And who do we play week three? Is it the Broncos or the Lions? I forgot who we play week three. But anyway, maybe they feel like he may be ready sooner rather than later. So they're like, you know what, Jimmy, you can hold a roster spot down. But hey, things could change between now and even in the next 30 minutes. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And just like uh, Rashad Bateman and Miles Boykin all for just the first three weeks at least. I'm out.